so with the remaining time, what I wanted to do was just uh, uh, play with some of the uh, Algodoo um, stuff. Because when I was uh, looking at the lecture videos, what I um, realized was um, most of the demonstrations that I've done for the oscillations lecture, it was with a physical demo, which is, you know, great. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, the introduction to oscill oscillations, um, demo there uh, with a you know, measurement of position and uh, the coupled oscillator somewhere here. Um, yeah, coupled oscillator demo. I love this demo. I wish um, I had an in-person lecture where I can show it. Um, and um, and I think I did some, uh, try to do some simulation of n harmonic oscillator with a pendulum. But outside of this, uh, I haven't really done any uh, simulation based uh, demo explanation. So what I wanted to do was um, show off some of the things that can be done on Algodoo from something really basic, just the mess on a spring to, um, to, I'm hoping to do a version of coupled oscillator on Algodoo. So with that, let me just uh, launch Algodoo. So um, you can start with something really basic, uh, like a mass on a spring. And with the mass on a spring, the most uh, basic setup you can have that requires as little explanation as possible is um, just mass horizontal mass on a horizontal frictionless surface moving horizontally. So uh, let me make this material frictionless and um, use a spring to connect the two. And I think uh, when I connect it this way, it'll, uh, this will be the equilibrium length. Let me uh, glue this to background and see what happens. Okay, this is resting on the ground. And now with my hand, I can drag and move it. And you know, a simple basic, um, oscillatory motion and uh, because this is simulation it allows you to do certain things like I um, don't know why it's uh, slowing down so quickly oh uh, the spring might have some damping yeah okay it's got damping okay let's get rid of spring, spring damping um, we have perfect spring that doesn't damp um, and I think if I right click on it yeah I can show plot and within this plot I can show a bunch of different things um, I guess the thing that makes most sense is the x velocity and not the speed. Yeah, so this is um, what you would see in an oscillatory motion, you know, sinusoidal thing. And if you also plot, um, let's see, can you plot energy? Um, Uh, I might have to do it as a different plot because energy doesn't have same unit as velocity. So the system probably doesn't let me uh, plot them together. Um, so let me um, make it show the, the linear kinetic energy. Yeah. And uh, let me pause the simulation briefly, clear both of them, and then let the simulation run. Then you can see how the kinetic energy changes as a function of time. Um, so like at the time where it has zero velocity, that should be where uh, they don't really line up. Huh? Um, okay, okay, I think I got them lined up. So where it has zero speed, you have zero kinetic energy. And as far as the energy goes, it doesn't care about the direction of the velocity. It's maximum where you have max and negative. And uh, let me see if um, probably one, let me, plot graph potential energy because um, or either let me plot it it won't just to give anything meaningful because um, it, it, as far as the property of this object goes it has gravitational potential energy that's what what it's plotting there um, and it's not you know it, 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 <laughs> it's not the interesting part in order to plot the potential energy that's uh, meaningful here you would have to go to the spring. I'm pretty sure I can do a plot of the spring and three objects. Huh, interesting. I don't think I've ever done this. Um, so let me see the potential energy or just the potential spring energy. 
let's see clear everything and let the simulation run yeah and if you vertically line this up i'm pretty sure you can see that um you you can see uh, when the potential energy is maximum here the kinetic energy will be minimum here and so on uh, let me see for uh, what it'll do if i plot the total energy i i don't know how in what sense it'll sound if uh, the three objects it's referring to are the points that are it's glued together so in the sum of total energy might not include the kinetic energy of the box. And yeah, that looks that way. So I think if you want to, um, let's say show conservation of energy, then what you need to do is you need to select um, all these. I think I can include that without any harm. I'll get rid of that. And let's see if we do a little plot something here. So um, uh, it'll let me plot speed, probably speed of the center of mass. Um, let me just try to see if I can plot the potential spring energy and the total energy sum. And yeah, the, so the sum doesn't change. Um, and I'm pretty sure there's a bit of an offset there because of the potential energy of the boxes. And now, if you look at this for too long, or maybe the right length of time, you might notice that energy is still decreasing. Uh, I thought I got rid of all the sources of energy dissipation. The spring doesn't have any damping anymore. This has no friction coefficient. Maybe you will notice, oh, there's a friction coefficient here. Let's make it go to zero. But even then, you will see that, oh, energy is still decreasing. And this is one of the wonderful things about simulation. You can do things that's uh, impossible to do in the real world. You can make the uh, air resistance go away. Um, I mean, in the real world, you can do it. You just have to put this in vacuum chamber, which <laughs> makes the whole working with the, the apparatus much harder. So anyways, here, um, I can just uh, turn off the air. And it'll do that. I wonder if I can, I can probably turn off gravity. Although, yeah, if I do that, it starts doing weird things, <laughs> simulation wise. But you know, it did make the gravitational potential energy go to zero, so it did confirm some of what we are seeing. Um, all right, uh, let me stop that and just go back to okay. Um, so that's good. Uh, let me see. I, I don't know what this was doing. Um, oh, because it's because I was plotting the X component of velocity only. So uh, that's a fun thing that you can do. And, you know, you can also change uh, some of the things. Let me just um, um, zero out its velocities. And um, you you can also um, have it set up this way. Um, you, you can set up a vertical uh, spring. So let me see here. I think I need to set this up at some height in order for um, spring to be short enough. And let me just put this somewhere here. Uh, let's see. I think I have my one. Um, oh wait, I, I do need a uh, damping to damp out everything too. Um, oh, and I need multiplier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't quite attach it at the center, which is why it's hanging that way. Um, so, um, so you know, you can do this uh, vertically as well. When you do this vertically, um, some of the things you will see is that your spring potential energy uh, will now have some um, um, non-zero offset. So it'll uh, it's uh, oscillating a little bit because of it, it's uh, you know it's not exactly at zero. If I pull this down and let it go up, then it'll do that. Um, and there's a point where spring potential energy reaches zero, which must be where it's gone past the equilibrium. And, um, and so, you know, a lot of the springs we work with in lab won't really compress. So um, where it does that would be the point where a lot of the springs in lab will go slack. Um, but uh, I think uh, once it loses enough energy, then it'll just, uh, uh, yeah. So this is the kind of the spring motion. Vertically, there's a little bit of offset because of the shift in the equilibrium position. But otherwise, it's the same 
oscillatory thing that you are used to seeing elsewhere. Uh, once it starts, I pulled it down too much. Okay, so let me um, try to do that uh, coupled oscillator demo. You can also use this to do a, a pendulum thing, but let me just leave that for another time. And um, for the remaining few minutes today, so I was thinking through how to do the coupled um, oscillator. So with a coupled oscillator um, of the type that I was demonstrating with the in-person thing, there's couple um, there's a, a, a required element for that to work. So um, one would be you know something that oscillates an oscillator. Um, can I? I'll just try to center it as much as I can. Um, so if you let me uh, glue this to background and let me clone this so that I have two identical oscillators. Now, if you simply have two oscillators, then these are not really coupled per se. Um, and they will just uh, oscillate, you know. When I, for example, uh, when I make one of them oscillate, oops, too much. When I make one of them oscillate, it doesn't do anything to the other one. There's no coupling between these two because really the, uh, let me get rid of the damping. It's annoying <laughs> how few um, it oscillates before it goes away. Um, it doesn't, um, so this motion has nothing to do with the here. It's not like it's moving air enough to get this to move. And um, so when you look at the in-person demo, when you look at it closely, there's a mechanism that couples motion of one to the other. So here, the issue here would be that um, this uh, object here, it's glued to the background. In, so, in the sense that that um, in the sense that there's nothing that will move this. So as this oscillates up and down, as there's reaction force on the platform, it doesn't force the platform to move. So what you need is for this platform to be able to respond to the motion of one of the oscillators. So I'm going to support this at the two ends with a spring. And I think if I just leave the spring as it is here, then it won't go quite well. In fact, sorry, I, I should really be cloning this so that they are identically supported at both ends. And if I simply let this go, I um, think oh, maybe it'll be fine. Oh, oh wait. wait. Okay. <laughs> so I need a vertical support so that these won't... Um, this won't fall over. Let's clone this. And these vertical supports, I need this to be glued to the background and frictionless. Okay. Now, if I just let this run, this might actually be enough. Um, yeah, let's give this a try. So, if I drag this down and move this up now. Now there's a kind of coupling between this motion and that. And you can see a little bit of demo of that. Um, not the best. Uh, let me see if I can do this uh, again. So, let's see. I wonder if it'll work better if these springs had a lesser spring constant. Let me make this uh, actually pause the simulation for a bit and uh, make this spring constant 150 and make this spring constant 150. Okay, I'm gonna pull one down and then let go. And over time, what you see is okay. Um, so the Beat frequency is a little bit too short to, to see this well. I think what I need is for this spring constant to be actually greater. Uh, let me make it 400. And uh, let me get rid of the damping here so that it doesn't the oscillation doesn't damp out so quickly. 
Okay. Um, let me actually get it to tempo for a bit uh, to help it find uh, equilibrium. And then no more damping. No more damping. Okay, and I pull this down and then move up. Okay, I think uh, now this demo is working the way it's intended to. You can see the kind of the transfer of energy from one to the other. Let me put it this way. Um, so let me just track the kinetic energy. So I'm going to plot the uh, kinetic energy of the left hand side of the mass over here. And I'm going to track the kinetic energy of the right hand side of the mass over here. So um, when I pull this down and make it oscillate, you start with a large kinetic energy here. And over time, kinetic energy of this increases and kinetic energy of this has gone to zero. And then over further time, the energy kind of sloshes back and forth between them. The, this has gone to zero, more or less. And now this has uh, the more of the kinetic energy. And uh, this is the kind of the phenomena you can see with the coupled oscillators, the energy kind of sloshes back and forth. And the uh, way to describe how, um, the most accessible way to describe it is in terms of what's called normal modes. Um, and the normal modes are, let me just uh, kill the speed here, kill the speed here. Um, so there's uh, two ways of getting these things to move that um, actually has a fixed frequency. So one way of getting this to move would be to have them move synchronously, like uh, up and down at the same time. When I set them up that way, you'll find that uh, it's a stationary. It doesn't, you know, their energy doesn't slosh back and forth between them. Um, it might slosh between these and maybe the platform somehow. Um, but uh, like these two pictures look identical, which you know you would expect because um, of symmetry. Um, so that's one normal mode. And the other normal mode is when they are, um, I don't know, anti-symmetric. I guess that's one way to uh, describe it. One where they are anti-symmetric. So it would be one where, um, let's see, let me make them come to equilibrium first. Uh, all right, they are at equilibrium. Oops, ah, they don't want to do that. Uh, make them, so with these at equilibrium. Now, um, the way I want to position them is I want to position one up one down, kind of about the same amount. So one up by about, I really need the reference. By about this much block amount. Oops. I think if this is the block amount, then I need it to be a little bit larger. Okay. One up by that amount. And then let me set this down. And then one down by the same amount. Okay, get rid of the block. So this is going to be another normal mode where these two, um, the whole thing is a kind of stable, well, stationary setup. So the energy doesn't, in fact, this is more stable than the other, I think, because uh, there's less energy transfer to the platform that way. Um, so the way you can see the, um, the one where energy was sloshing back and forth between these two ways of moving, um, you can think of it this way. Uh, so, so when I have this set up with this, just one of them pulled down, it's like a superposition of one where both were pulled down and one where one was pulled down and one was uh, pushed up. That way, uh, one of the masses is at the same position at the equilibrium. One of them is away from equilibrium. And these two oscillation modes, they have different oscillation frequency. 
So that's why I was referring to beat frequency, which we'll cover next week. <laughs> um, the, this results in a kind of interference phenomena. And the resulting interference phenomena makes it that um, kind of energy sloshes from one to the other and then back to this object. And um, the nice thing about simulation is now uh, once it's set up, you can do a lot of different things that's uh, difficult to do in real world objects. Um, but we are out of time, so <laughs> I'll leave that for you to play with or uh, I don't know, I'll come back to it some other time.